Well, welcome to Heartbeat Christian Academy. It's so lovely to be with you again. Uh, there's the banking details if you want to partner with us. And then also there's the contact details if you want to contact us. And if, you, if you're new to this class, we've been talking about daily quiet time. And we spoke about the purpose of daily quiet time. And today we're going to be talking about the practice of daily quiet time. Well, I want to start off by saying that daily quiet time is not something that is forced upon anybody. It's not forced upon us. But I, what I think and, and what I believe we are trying to do here at the Academy as, as we're talking about this and discussing it with you is not to try and force people to have daily quiet time or to tell them that the Bible says you have to have daily quiet time or there's a requirement or a law. No, what we are trying to say to people is that there's great value in having daily quiet time. And we want you actually to see this. We want, to, we want you to understand. Uh, we've spoken about the Word of God and the power that's in God's Word. And uh, we speak about prayer in this course and about how powerful prayer is. And when we start putting everything together, we are a spirit being. Uh, and we're living in a body. And we have a soul. And we're walking around in a world that's full of minefields. There's attacks from left to right. There's powers. There's principalities. We've read this throughout our scriptures. And throughout our time together, we've spoken about this. So it's not an easy world. It's a difficult world. And uh, like I say, always say, uh, I could be speaking to various people. You might be a Christian that's been on the road for a long time. Let me tell you, you can still derive value from what we say here. Even what we're going to go through today, you will look at it and say to yourself, well, maybe I should implement some of these things. I've actually implemented through the years that we've been doing this in the academy, Every time I implement what I, what I learn, it's a refresher. The Apostle Paul says, you know, it's, it's no problem for me to write the same things to you over and over again because we need to hear those things over and over again. So if you're a Christian that's been on the road for a long time, uh, this could be a challenge just to refresh your quiet time and to start looking at some of the things that we're saying here and, and maybe applying those principles to your life. If you're a new Christian, you will do extremely well to get to these basics and actually implement them in your life. Not as a law, but, but as a strategy, as understanding where you are, who you are, what are you supposed to do, and seeing that you cannot fight this war and you cannot win this war without being connected to Christ, without being sensitive to the Spirit. Your victory will come from the spiritual dimension, which means you have to have this connection. So the quiet time, as I've said in the previous lecture, it's not about appeasing God and pleasing God. It's a practical thing. A lot of people even misunderstand prayer. They think that prayer is for God. So if we go and offer prayer, then God's happy because the prayer bank account's got some money in it. And no, it's not about that. It's prayer is actually given to us. It's, it's our weapon. It's something we can use for our benefit. And what we are teaching here and what we are sharing with you with, with a heart of love we are telling you that there are things that you and me have to do and can do to really become victorious in our spiritual life, to live a victorious Christian life. A lot of people, a lot of Christians that I've met through the years, they refuse to have daily quiet time or they have a very superficial daily quiet time. They, uh, they want to do a lot of other things. They like to read books. They, they like to sometimes listen to CDs. They like to listen to gospel music. They don't mind attending church. But for them, it's very difficult to, to commit themselves to God and say, look, I'm going to do something. Uh, and I've heard so many excuses. I've heard people say to me, well, Richard, I don't like reading. Well, that's no longer a problem anymore because you've got the U version Bible where you can uh, download that on your Android phone or on your iPhone. Uh, it's a, and, and it's got various translations of the Bible. We deal with those in, in, in essential Bible study, but various translations of the Bible, even other resources on, on the U version. But the nicest thing that I've seen is, is the reading plan where it actually will work out for your plans and different plans. But what I've done many times is the, is, is the one year Bible where you read through the Bible in a year. And what I do is, is I read those sections, those chapters that uh, it suggests uh, as I'm running through the Bible, sort of chronologically from Genesis straight through to Revelation. And every year as I'm reading, uh, I, I discover something rich from some of the chapters. 
And the years that I've been lazy and that I've, or I've missed it for a few days because the, the nice thing about this Bible schedule is that the, the you can actually remind you. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I know there are many others. Uh, there's Esau, there's other applications, but I just sort of, the you has this uh, reading plans and then it has this way of reminding you, even in your schedule, you, once you've selected a Bible plan and you've said to it, this is the Bible plan that I want, then it will ask you, do you want to set a remind, reminder? And then it will actually remind you on your phone. Uh, and if you are, uh, you know, committing yourself to quiet time, if you're saying, I'm going to have quiet time every morning between the hours of six and seven or between the hours of five and six or even four and five, or I'm going to have a, a half an hour quiet time in the morning, you can actually see how long the reading is going to take you. And you can do that. You commit yourself to that. And I will always say to every Christian, not as a law, but, but as a strategy to do this. It's kind of like exercise. You know, exercise and correct eating is not a law. It's, it's not, nobody's going to come and put a gun against your head and say, you have to eat right. You have to exercise. But the fact of the matter is, if you don't, there are consequences. And those consequences normally come out later in your life. And how many times we've had to pray for people for healing that have actually caused their own illness where their illness was self-inflicted because of their lifestyle. And as we get older, we start looking at these things. When we're younger, we feel invincible. And maybe a young Christian will be listening to this lecture and thinking to themselves, oh, this is a lot of work. This is issues. It's not. You, <laughs> let me tell you, you are avoiding a lot of work. You are avoiding a lot of hassles. Because let me tell you that the more you can hear the voice of God, the more sensitive you are to God's voice, the better your life is going to be. It's going to be such a blessing as you hear God's voice and you start hearing what He says and you start acting upon what He has told you to do. So I want to inspire you as we go into this lecture to open your spiritual ears and even to the previous one where we, where we were just talking about the purpose. Now we're going to talk about the practice and the practice addresses uh, some of the practical aspects. Again, I'm not going to read every scripture and every heading you read the work through. I always suggest that the students go through the manual and they read it a few times. It normally takes me three times to go through the manual before I get the necessary revelation and then complete the worksheet. In this case, we've got a worksheet. Complete the worksheet and then you should internalize that and not just read the manual three times, not just complete the worksheet, but then make notes in a notebook or if you like to highlight in your workbook, if you've got one uh, or if you've got a separate book and then decide what are you going to apply? What in this lecture are you going to actually do in your life that's going to cause uh, tremendous change and effectual change? Because everything we apply uh, of God in, uh, in our lives, everything that's to do with God's word, if we apply it, we see tremendous results, tremendous fruits, tremendous blessing. And we just... Like I say, we avoid so many hassles. If you're thinking of, uh, and, and again, I'm talking to all Christians, new Christians, pastors, uh, aspiring pastors. If you fall into sin, if you fall into deception, if you fall into, into a, a sin where, where, where you've been lured into this by the enemy because of a lack of quiet time, because of a lack of meditation on scripture, because of a lack of being able to hear the Holy Spirit, that sin or, or that distraction or that thing that the enemy has lured you in can destroy your ministry. It can not only destroy your ministry, it can actually uh, end up taking your life. I've seen people die because of falling into incorrect things and just sliding down like you would slide down one of these slippery slides. You start sliding uh, at a certain speed uh, and then it just gets faster and faster and faster as you pick up momentum. And it's the same with the devil. When he puts his toe in your door, you know, he will, he will wiggle and wiggle till he gets some of the front toes in and so forth. And then he will move more and more and more into your life until he's taken a huge section of your life. Now, as a new Christian, many new Christians, when you tell them this, you say you have to make some commitments to God and to yourself. And you have to develop and cultivate some very good spiritual habits and disciplines in your life. When you say this, they think you're talking nonsense because they're experiencing the joy of the Lord. They've just had salvation. They've just experienced salvation. They've got that joy in their hearts and they think, what's this dude talking about? 
I don't feel like this. I'll never feel like that. But when the difficulty comes, normally after what we call the honeymoon phase in Christianity, that is when these practices kick in. Because then you, you really um, find that these words come up. You know, through the years I've been doing this, reading, reading the Bible, reading the Bible, reading the Bible, and, and just reading. And sometimes I read and, and, and I meditate and I pray and I do everything. And there's no, nothing that really pops up. And then one day in a week's time, two weeks time, I have a tremendous issue in my life. And all of a sudden, uh, the Holy Spirit quickens what I've put inside of me in my quiet time. And then I have the perfect response. If I didn't have those quiet time sessions, if I didn't read God's word on a daily basis, if I didn't fill myself with, with God's word, then I would have had huge problems at that point in my life. But because of the practice of His presence, because of the practice of quiet time, spending time with the Lord, I've storm-proofed my house. I've managed to get to a point where I've applied the word in certain areas where I've, I've buffeted my house and I've, and I've strengthened it, I've buffeted my body and strengthened my house and got myself to a point where I could actually stand through those wiles of the devil as the devil was prowling around my life. So let's be careful as we, uh, and reverent as we go into this lecture. Uh, we're going to be running through this quite quickly. Daily quiet time, the practice, we're talking about blessed is the man, the requirements and the regulations. Um, the outcome is begin and practice having regular meaningful quiet times with God and help others to do the same. You might say you don't have time. I'll say to you, you don't have time not to. Because the time that you do this will be an important thing in your life, a critically important thing. And you know the difference, and I've said this in many lectures, I can't remember if I've said this in our lectures, but you know the difference between urgent and important things. The problem is urgent things will demand attention and will keep you busy. But if you neglect important things, it's. I always like to uh, compare this with servicing your car. Servicing your car is not urgent, it's important. It's quiet time is important. It might not be urgent. Other things are more urgent. But if you don't service your car, the day the car packs up, uh, you you will lose much more time than you gained by, by just focusing on, on the demanding urgent things. So do the important thing, and that is have quiet time. Uh, objectives, plan your quiet time, hear the voice of God, train others in the skill. Blessed is the man. And uh, we look at, uh, again, the scripture that says in, in Deuteronomy uh, verse 1 to 3, you can read it. The section I've underlined here is, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds of the mouth of God, understanding that we need to feed upon God's word. And Psalm says here, uh, Psalm 1, 2, and 3 says, Blessed is the man who delights in the law of the Lord, and his law he meditates day and night. So we're talking about delight. Delight. Blessed is the man who does two things here. He delights, so he finds pleasure. And let me tell you, delight doesn't uh, normally come easily as far as the word is concerned. Because what I found, and this is just my personal experience, my delight came as I read the word. So again, talking to maybe new Christians, as you read the word and you start reading through it, just reading a chapter, half a chapter a day, as uh, you know, as you can fit it in and you can read it, the delight will develop. Uh, initially, it might not be a delight. You might think, what, I'm, what am I doing? But as you're reading, and I, I mean, like I say, I would just go for a reading plan. If, 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 it, if I was you, and, and I could talk to myself a few years ago, uh, you know, I would just say, look, do your reading plan. Do your reading plan. The delight will follow. Uh, and then you can meditate. Um, it is. It, it asks you, is it possible to get to the stage with God? Yes, it is possible. Uh, as you meditate on His Word, as you read His Word, as you just start practicing the presence, as you start getting into it, you will find that, uh, meditation will produce the delight for God's word. A lot of times you read a portion of scripture and you, 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 you just force yourself. Meditation just means you force yourself to consider that, to think. Uh, it's not like, I'm not talk, we're not talking about sitting and going, eh, no, uh, sitting with your legs crossed. and No, no, we're talking about, you know, thinking about 
the word, considering it. Um, say, for instance, you've read the, the section on David and Goliath, and, and, and you've read it, and, and, and you've read it a few times through. Uh, you've made some notes, you know, about things that happened in the story, and then you look at your notes, and you're meditating, you're thinking about it, and then Holy Spirit says something new, and you write that down, and that is what we're talking about. It's that meditation of the Word, and then all of a sudden, something pops out of it, out of the story that you've never seen, and that makes you so excited that you, uh, you, you are just, you know, God has been speaking to you, man. That that's what it's about. Uh, the requirement, uh, it says here, daily quiet time is having intimate fellowship with God our Father through His Word by the Holy Spirit. And then it also says here uh, that the Holy Spirit has been sent to glorify Lord, Lord Jesus Christ by revealing Him to us in the Word of God. So we will see Christ in those scriptures and, and receive that revelation. So uh, the requirements are, uh, number one is you need a Bible. And, um, y you know, y here we use 1 Timothy 3, 1, 16. All scripture is, is given by inspiration. And then 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21. That says, knowing first that no prophecy in scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Uh, men died to get us this Bible. I mean, people died for it still today. Bible is illegal in countries. We have uh, this very great privilege of having a Bible. Uh, it says you get a, a, a special Bible. And uh, again, uh, you know, just talking to the digital kids, we do have this on our smartphones. And, and if you are doing this sort of Bible reading plans, then obviously you, don't, you can get an unmarked Bible. You can get a special Bible. Uh, you can get a readable Bible that's a readable English and a readable print. I mean, on the digital Bibles, you can actually even increase the Bible size. Uh, I, I, I don't know if it's in one of the courses or where I saw this or read this, but Billy Graham uh, was once asked, what is the best Bible translation? I think it was on some kind of television show. They asked him, what is the best Bible translation? And you know, everybody's always been arguing about it. And I know when we talk about... Uh, the third year students, we talk about exegesis uh, and we talk about hermeneutics, uh, interpretation. Yes, when we're doing specific study, when we're preparing messages, you know, interpretation, uh, you know, is, is normally very important. And, and we need to then look at our Bible translation. If it's a literal translation, a dynamic translation, how accurate the translation is, um, you know, comparing it to the original uh, text and the, and the oldest manuscripts, those kinds sort of things. But... For this, for quiet time Bible reading, um, I would use Billy Graham's advice. Uh, when they asked him on TV, they were expecting a very sophisticated answer. And his answer was simple. They said, what is the best Bible, Billy? Tell us, tell us. You, you're such a renowned Christian figure. Uh, we're sure you're going to be able to tell us what is the best Bible. Uh, and he said, the best Bible is the one that you actually read. <laughs> and they that knocked the guys out of the park. They they didn't know, uh, you know, how to respond to that, but it's so true. Uh, the best Bible is the one you read. I prefer to read the NIV. I've, I've been grilled for it before, and even in theology studies, we, 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 we told, you know, to to look at the King James version, uh, you, you know, and and the New King James is, is maybe a good um, one with where they've where they've improved the English a bit. If you don't like that old English. Uh, the NIV for me is, is a good reading Bible, so it's easy for me to read New International Version. I tried to use the older one because there's definitely some st stuff that dropped out of the newer versions. But I don't become a stickler about this. Uh, as Billy Graham says, the best Bible is the one you actually read. And if there's certain things that your Bible translation does not have in it, I'm sure God is going to reveal that to you as you grow in Him. And He might he might even use a little bird to come chirp it. You, you know, uh, don't get so bogged down with a letter that that you don't discover the spirit and that you don't rely upon the spirit to take you through this process uh, so uh, this is just some practical tips that we have here uh, that is uh, you know get a readable bible uh, print you know where the smaller fonts are extremely difficult to read but with the digital bibles on your tablets your computers your smartphones it's not a problem then a notebook 
um, and uh, I actually like this statement where it says the best notebook is, is maybe a current diary of the year. So then you can write per day again. Uh, taking it to the digital kids here, I'm using Google Docs. Uh, the nice thing about Google Docs is you can use this on your uh, you can use this on your on your on your smartphone on your tablet. Uh, you can use it on on your computer. So your documents and your record of, of what the Lord has showed you is all over the show. You don't have to go and, and find it somewhere. Uh, it's right there where you want it, which is uh, tremendous, uh, you know, to, to do. Um, and, and I'll show you now as we uh, just as I'm going to share my my screen uh, with you. And then I uh, I'll show you, you know, that if you, for instance, this is Google Docs. If if, for instance, I log into my Google account, all my documents that I've done uh, with the dates that I've worked on them is right here. Uh, just imagine that. So you've got everything that you've been working on is right here. It's stored in the cloud. I can access it from different places. But as I'm as I'm going through, um, you know, different docs, as the Lord is showing me different things, I can uh, store this. So yeah, in the manual we talk about obviously the the notebook and, and the diary, which is great. But yeah, also um, you, you can uh, you can use a word document. You can put the date on top and then have one document. Uh, you can store that in your Dropbox or in your Google Drive if you wanted to access it maybe from your phone. But Google Docs, actually, if I edit it on my phone, it updates on my computer. If later I, the, I'm meditating still on God's Word, and then all of a sudden I go back to my computer and I'm working maybe at, at, at the business or I'm sitting at the radio station, I can go to those notes. I can search those notes. I can copy and paste scriptures right in there. I can even um, use those to to um, to preach a message later. Or if, if I feel that the Lord showed me something and I meet somebody that needs to hear that, I open up my smartphone, I go into my Google Docs and bam, and it's free. So it's not costing me anything. That's just, you know, what I would have added. Obviously, our curriculum is, is um, you know, has been around for a long time. And uh, we have not updated it. So I'm updating it on the lecture side and just giving you some information and saying there are some other technologies that you can use that actually work pretty well. And then also <clears throat> we talk about a prayer list. Uh, we've spoken about that before. If I think it might be in another lecture, I do so many lectures at the same time. But it's it's wonderful. Yankee Charles got, um, you know, uh, the largest church in the world and, and he talks about you know, the prayer list and keeping the records and then being able to do praise report as the Lord answers those uh, prayers. Then you also need a time and a place. Uh, and, and Mark 1, uh, 35 says, Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place. And there he prayed. Just stating that Jesus prayed in the mornings early. Uh, and for me, that's the right time. Uh, you know, you have to sort of look at yourself, your schedule, uh, maybe what type of person is. For, for me, the morning is the pristine time. It's the best time. It's the time that that I have my best productivity. I'm wide awake. I'm jumping around. And then also it's, it's the first time. For me, it's the best. It's my first fruits of my time. I'm like Matthew 6 here says, I'm seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The length here, uh, you know, the curriculum uses Matthew 26, 40 that says, uh, uh, what could you not watch with me for one hour? So, uh, but we're not saying here that it has to be an hour. We're just saying, you know, it will develop. Uh, it will develop. I think when it comes to a relationship, uh, any kind of a relationship, you don't want to put a time frame on it. You want, want it to naturally develop. But, you know, depending on yourself, if you, um, I mean, we're sitting in front of television, if, if we have to be honest with ourselves, we're sitting in front of television a lot of times, it's easy for us to spend an hour, uh, I think the average uh, um, season show is, is, is about 40 minutes, start adding your, your, your ads to it, you get to an hour at least. So I don't think it's too much time, but I, but I think that we should start and I would advise any believer in any young christian or a believer that's been on the road for a long time but but really neglects this because there's a lot of people you can see the guilt in their faces when you're preaching or you start teaching about 
quiet time and prayer. Uh, you, you know, there's a lot of people that that um, that don't do this. They don't see it as important. They don't see it as part of the Christian life. They uh, they don't see the the significance and the relevance of it. But let me tell you, it's the difference between getting mentally ill. Uh, Honestly, if I can get very frank about it, it's the difference between getting mentally ill, and I'm not saying no. I'm not saying that it's the only, um, you know, solution for mental illness. But I'm saying this could be the difference between getting mentally ill and living a solid, sound life. Because even if you go to psychology and you go look at some of the practices of psychology and some of the, the latest findings in in uh, in uh, popular psychology or what I like to call positive psychology, uh, even people like Caroline Leaf, um, you know, who's a neuroscientist and, and studying the brain and how the brain works. A lot of the practices in the Christian faith that, that, that the Lord has given us as the church are psychologically beneficial. So if you pray, for instance, there's a psychological benefit to that. If you are able to express your heart, your, your hurt, your pain, your problems and you are able to speak about that and you are believing that that God is hearing you it's it's kind of like therapy <laughs> prayer becomes therapy um, you are expressing at least and your ears are hearing what your mouth is saying and then you know you, you are dealing with things you're not bottling them up where the psychologist and the psychiatrist will tell you it's very unhealthy to bottle those emotions to suppress them at least now you're getting them out you're crying in front of the lord you allowing yourself to be expressive so i don't want to labor the point but let me tell you uh, it's one of the things that that uh, really can make and break the difference you see the christian walking in victorious even though this attacks uh, vi living a victorious christian life living in, in, a, in a dimension of victory, even when it's the storm, this Christian will still stand in that position. You will see his face, you will see his participation in ministry, you will see his commitment, you will, and, you, and you know this is a Christian that spends regular time with God. It's kind of like an athlete. He's in physical good condition. Even if he runs a marathon and the sweat is running from his brow and, and he looks like he's, he's going to die, <laughs> You can still see this is a, a prepared soldier. This is somebody that's standing in, 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 in the army of God. And this is why I'm saying, you know, and, and I know we, we're talking about this over and over again, but, but I'm stressing it to you because it's so important. After almost 30 years with the Lord, I've realized that many of the times in my life where the enemy has attacked my quiet time and removed it from my life, it's, it, it was strategic that the devil did this to bring me to a fall in a certain area and i would experience tremendous problems in areas at the same time so the lord would separate me he would separate me you know god you can't be separated from god in the spirit but in the physical it's your awareness of god that's separated so you need to understand that so god is as close as you believe he is in terms of 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 the soul area so quiet time brings us into the consciousness and the focus of God. And what the enemy tries to do is it first tries to separate you from that awareness and that position of security with God. And then he hits you with everything that he's got. You know, it's, it's like warfare where he looks for your weakness and he tries to exploit that and tries to destroy you. And then you might find yourself not understanding what's going on, um, even starting to talk uh, bad things over yourself, working with the devil, um, start being self-destructive, uh, you feel that you don't want to live anymore and all sorts of things. And then if you start moving back and you start looking, you'll see at some stage you've lost your intimacy, uh, you've lost your relationship and it started with your quiet time, with the practice of your quiet time. And then you know, it builds up to a point where, where you're looking at everything else in your life. You're trying to fix this, trying to fix that, trying to pray about this, trying to fast about that, getting the prayer group to do this. and But you, you're still not fixing the real problem. The real problem is that you need to have this intimate relationship. Uh, the parakletos is the word in the, in the Greek um, for Holy Spirit. And that is the one who walks alongside. He wants to have this real uh, co-mission with us, where we are co-missioning. A lot of times when you think about the, the Great Commission, 
we think it's our mission and we running and doing it on a, it's a co-mission and the co-mission works with the holy spirit right there along our side and again I'm, I'm talking too much but i i hope that it helps you when i'm transparent and i tell you about my life because i don't want to sit here being pretentious and being on the past i've done everything uh, correctly no i've actually messed up in this area badly and and it cost me then also uh, you need expectancy uh, you know uh, expect what god is is doing and then also you need to look at your physical life uh, don't tire yourself out don't overeat don't you know get yourself into into a very bad state and then you want to all of a sudden try and fix things you cannot do it you need to also look after your body and make sure that it says you're early to bed early to rise it's it's so critical because else you will always feel tired uh, we're talking about mental your mental attitude spoken about that and then also spiritual you know um, you you have to obey what God says so don't walk it un uh, or disobedience and unforgiveness and hate and those sort of things don't allow that um, it, it says here in 1 John 3 9 beloved if our hearts does not condemn us we have confidence toward God and a lot of times we don't want to have quiet time because our heart condemns us so we need to sort that out and then the regulations this is just some guidelines it's like I say these things that we are giving you here this is not you know the, the heartbeat Christian Academy the only way of of having quiet time <laughs> the only way of spending time with the Lord no these are some aspects that we are giving you uh, some things that we are sharing with you this is personal development uh, so we're saying we want to develop in these areas and this is a critical area out of this everything else will flow if you have that relationship with God the rest will come it's seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything will be added unto you Matthew 6 33 you need to put God in the center um, and, and make sure that He is the center of your life so that everything else can be added. Uh, so let's just run through these regulations quickly. And like I say, you can apply many of them in your life. We're talking about waiting. And that is just about an expectation of God communicating with us and hearing His voice. Um, reading. Uh, remember what I said, uh, you know, about reading God's Word. Uh, uh, it's God breathed. So as, as we read it, uh, we are we are reverently coming, uh, you know, trusting the Lord will reveal things to us. Um, then also we talk about systematic and, and that I said sections of the Bible. Uh, remember we said an unmarked Bible. This is this is devotional time that we're spending with God. So this isn't necessarily a specific study time. It could a lot of times my devotional time goes into study time, but I first have that reading of the Scripture sometimes a verse uh, a chapter two chapters and you know uh, maybe i should just mention this you you don't I, I know we're saying yeah you have to go to a quiet time that sort of thing but you know what i've i've done this in my car uh, when i didn't have time life just sometimes gets hectic and and uh, we don't that, let's not be you know pretentious yeah there, there has been time in my life when i've not had the time things have gone wrong my day started upside down I would do this in my car. I would do it in the bathroom. I would do it anywhere. I just put on my, my I take my cell phone. I put on my, my uh, U Bible. I go to the Bible plan. I select the plan and, and I just start listening to it. I put my headphones in and I just start listening to it. And I listen to it. I'm not saying this is always like that. So it's times when I can sit in, in my study and I'm in a quiet space. But don't be um, religious about it and say, well, you know, if I, didn't, if I didn't get to the study this morning, oh, it's pretty much gone for the day. No, it's not. Um, you know, uh, and you're saying, well, I, I have to actually now uh, come and be still and, and, and I have to come reverently and, and I have to wait and, and I have to follow this procedure. No, it's not like that. This is just a guideline and it's a good practice to follow. It's, it's nice to have those days when you can do it, but you won't always be able to do it. But if something goes wrong, at least do something. If, if, you know, we're saying maybe read um, a half a chapter, uh, but maybe you can't read a half a chapter. You, maybe you can only read a little section. At least do that. Cultivate that awareness. Cultivate that discipline and, and do that because uh, you will be happy that you did because eventually it will pay off as you have that priority and that consistency in your life. Um, 
then also uh, we talk about intelligently you know looking at the different books um, it says you yeah, read only one chapter at a time or even uh, half a chapter if it's too long uh, get a general overview uh, you know read through the portion three times uh, that can be a good practice because then you get like an overview sometimes it's necessary sometimes it's not then um, get the specific uh, point what is it saying and then get the personal application or uh, what God is saying to me personally you know a lot of times we, we <laughs> the one thing it says yeah don't worry about your friends and think about them yeah you you talking about uh, you know it's, it's about you God's talking to you and saying oh that's a handy scripture for my friend um, it's actually for you then meditate and then record you know write down what the Lord is showing you then we get to prayer and again like I say the sequence can change there, there are times when when the Lord is it's just I, I get into the into my into my closet or into my prayer room or into my study and I just start start by praying it doesn't always this it's not always the same and um, then we talk about uh, uh, adoration you know worshiping God uh, the uh, giving him glory maybe starting with praise and thanksgiving um, adjusting yourself uh, to confirm to his word um, you, you know and then asking uh, sort of getting into where you're asking and talking as the holy spirit leads you there's little guideline there about that but um, again none of these things are set in stone we, we're not talking about you know this is the only way and uh, you know do it this way or you're going to hell and that sort of thing no 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 this is not what we're saying we're saying that this is what we are is adding value uh, and suggesting uh, but I'm sure after this lecture now you understand that this is critical it's not uh, a nice to have it's not something that you know you can do if you want to do it no we're talking about this is mission critical we have to do it so I, I trust you've enjoyed this section in, in the work in Christian Basics 1 as we've, we've been talking about personal development and various aspects of that. Uh, the nice thing about these lectures, because they're recorded, you can always go back and you can go look at them. You've got your notes. Uh, if you don't have the notes, you've got my detail to get the notes. You've got the worksheets to work through them. And through the years that you live as a Christian on planet Earth, you can always go back to these. Uh, if you're losing uh, um, inhibition and, and motivation for quiet time, you go back to those lectures. You go look at them again or listen to them again. And I'm sure that they will help you and inspire you. And I'm sure that by now you understand, um, you know, the aspects of personal development as a Christian, that there are certain things that we have to do, that we have to be involved in, uh, in order for us to actually live victoriously. You will learn more about these things as we go through the, the courses at Heartbeat Christian Academy and we go through the different phases. I believe that every phase brings different aspects to light and that uh, the wholeness of, of our Christianity becomes very apparent as we start uh, just developing in various areas as a Christian. And I trust this has blessed you as it's blessed me. And it's been a blessing for me to be with uh, you in this section of the work. It's been quite special, I must say. I do it every year, but this year it's really been special recording it. And I've just felt that the Spirit's really lifted up certain things. And I pray that those things have fallen into your spirit. Well, I hope to see you in the next section, in the final section of Christian Basics 1, as we enter into Christian character. God bless you.